generally speaking, low and slow. And some basic things, like first word out of your mouth should be their okay. first name. First name. Some people want to say Mr. So-and-so or Mr. First name. You're calling a friend. Because if somebody calls my cell phone, guess who answers my cell phone 99.8% of the time? You. Me. So why should somebody have to ask, is this so-and-so? So if you have to ask a question, that's a disaster too. Yeah. So like, so if if you have to ask, is it somebody and not state their name like a fact? Like, you know, um, give me a name one more time. Oh, Cody. Cody, thank you, Cody. Okay, so it's good. if I'm calling you, it's Cody. Just a ring, ring. Hello. Cody. How you doing? Hey, Cody, this is Mike. I'm giving you a call back. Okay. Oh, what's going on? Cody, I'm ca calling about the mortgage that it looks like you took out three months ago with PNC Bank. For the property there on Central Avenue, do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, it's kind of ringing a bell, but I'm not too sure. Guess what? Nobody's ever told me that you couldn't remember your mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> I ask questions, I get yeses too. <laughs> now, <laughs> now then I might get up. We already, we are, we done sold the property, or we done paid it off, or my payment's not late. <laughs> I mean, but it's rare that if it's a mortgage protection lead that I get a, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Okay, so if you understand my questions are designed to get me yeses. First thing, even though it's not a question, it gets me a yes. I'm calling about your mortgage, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Then I can go on and say, well, the reason I'm calling Cody is uh, they put this file on my desk, and you may not remember this, but sometime around the closing or after the closing, it looks like you completed this application form for the mortgage protection for that loan. You know the program that covers your mortgage payments if you die or have a heart attack or stroke? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to get a yes or no. So if it's a mortgage protection, even the specific to mortgage protection, those are that's my yes train. Yes to their name, yes to their mortgage, yes to the form. Now, notice like if it's a RW lead, it's two years old, I might say you may not remember this, but it looks like sometime around the closing that the W felt this form. You know what I'm talking about? Does this sound familiar? And if they say, no, I don't remember, they're actually still agreeing with me because I said, you may not remember. So when they said, I said, well, that's it. And if they said, I don't remember, I said, Cody, that's exactly why I'm calling. Because it looks like this is overlooked or forgotten. And with COVID and all the stuff that's been happening the last two years, we know there's some people that somehow got missed or their stuff didn't get taken care of property, properly, which is why your file's on my desk to make sure we get you this packet of information and make sure you and your family aren't left in the dark. So you can use the fact that it's been a while and they don't remember as that's the reason why the file's on your desk. You don't need to be scared by that. You don't need to be like apologetic. No, that's what I'm calling. You know, and be more emphatic about that. So I think it, you can be bold and be direct in that. But the things that cause these objections is more important than being able to have them to overcome the objection. Because if you can stop it from happening, you don't have to overcome it. Let's just hit some of these, and we'll we'll have some fun. But somebody says, "Take me off your list." Okay. Anybody want got ideas on how they might handle it, or how they've handled it? I'm not sure what list you're talking about. Okay. Hey, or I'm going to acknowledge first. Say, "Hey, sounds like you want me to take you off the list, Kevin." I, I wish it was a list, but I've actually looked at a, at a file here, and uh, got a bunch of personal information. I said, uh, uh, "Let me make sure I got the right guy." Is this Kevin? Da, 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 and I give the address. Da, da, da. Okay, so I've got the right guy with Kevin. And I'll start over again. The reason I'm calling is this file is on my desk. And it looks up. Because, see, if you got this, the first thing is you got to remember you probably sound like a telemarketer, which is why they're thinking there's a list. Okay, so they can put, I'm on the do not call list. I said, well, you probably are. Sounds like you're on the do not call list. And so I, I wish I could help. But I've got a file here. And I'm. I was told to call you because of this file that I've got with all this personal information. Let me make sure I've got the right person. And slow down and you're almost starting over again. And then you're trying to bridge the gap of here's why we're calling and getting the connection, getting their mind. Because they might have just been so busy, they were half listening to you trying to think. I wonder if this is one of those auto warranty scam calls again. And how do I quickly get them off the phone? And so they're half listening, hoping that's what it is. So they can go back to what they were thinking about before. So you've got to learn to slow down and get them back in the mindset in some cases. Um, not interested. Typically, 
again, it's a brush off. But if they're like, if they're acknowledging you and you get, if we go deeper and they're like, no, no, I know the form you're talking about. And no, I don't have an interest. I said, really? Well, Kevin, it sounds like you're not interested. I said, was it that you're not interested in protecting your family or like they, you have something in place or help me understand? Because it looks like you went through some trouble to fill this form out. I'm a little confused. Yeah. So nothing's going to work 100%. Nothing's going to work 100%. You're going to get some crazies. That's part of the fun. You know, it's like, you said it didn't feel fun. I said, well, they're not going to remember you 10 minutes from now, so don't worry about it. Okay. Um, a, a, the A. We try to hit everything once we avoid not sounding like a telemarketer. It's how we make sure we acknowledge and then ignore and then move on or move forward and book in the appointment. You know, take me off your list. I'm going to acknowledge the fact they said list. You know, um, not interested. What's, tell me. Sounds like you're not interested. What is you're not interested in, or what did you think? Hey, what do you think it is that we you know, about why I'm calling that you're not interested? Because it looks like you wasn't interested. Looks like you went through some trouble to kind of start this process, Cody. I'm a little bit confused. So just going to try to get engaged more. Um, is what I'm going to do there. All right. Already purchased. Kevin, sounds like you already got some mortgage protection, or sounds like you already got something to handle that. Is that right? Yeah, Jim came out last month and wrote me a policy. Well, that's amazing. I'm glad that you guys got this taken care of. Now, somehow it looks like that data didn't come back to our systems. It looks like that's part of the reason why the file is to open. Did you receive your policy already? Yes. You have received it. Okay, well, two things. One is we want to make sure that we can get this file closed out since you've got this taken care of. Um, this shouldn't take any time. I always want to verify your coverage so we can report that it's all done. What time do you typically get home from work? Round three. Round three. Well, they've got me scheduled to be there between four and five tomorrow. I just want to make sure you're there. If you've got your policy handy, we'll verify everything and close everything out real quick so you don't get bothered. Well, now, because now sometimes somebody got a policy and now we have a chance to review it. Yeah. And now sometimes we found out what they got was the AARP five-year renewable term. They went and got something to their job that they don't know is a five-year renewable term. They got a global life accidental policy. Who knows what they got? But, but now we have a chance to be in the field and look at it because they're there. And that's what we want is a shot. And sometimes maybe they got a Superman policy, which is as good as anything else that we issue. And if so, that's fantastic. We're not upset. We're just perfect. Good job. Yeah. Like, so, so just because you're there and with what we do, maybe there is, maybe somebody's taking care of they got the best thing they can have for that one need. But are your antennas up as you're making this friend quickly? Are you looking for the next need? Are you realizing, hey, there's more here? Hey, where did you say you work again? Oh, I'm retired. Really? Well, if you're retired, tell me, what you have a 401k? What'd you do with that? How's, how are you feeling about all this craziness in the market and the government talking about, you know, this debt ceiling and the, and the time ending, whatever's going to happen. What, how's that? Is that messing with you? Is it messing with your money? Did you know those programs to protect you against those variations and gyrations? You know, whatever it is, you can get in there. All right, already purchased. Um, don't remember? Slow down. Or I said, hey, or again, I said, that's why I'm calling because it looks like we tried to reach out to you and somehow it looks like um, this got overlooked or forgotten. We're not sure what happened, but that's exactly why my file is on the desk because it looks like you forgot about this. I make it the reason for the call. So often you can make the excuse the reason. Here's another one that can happen when you're trying to book is I'm busy. I'm too busy. So sounds like you're really, again, acknowledge. Cody, sounds like you're really busy. What's keeping you so busy, Cody? Uh, man, we're right now working on a 12-hour shift. You're working a 12-hour shift? How many days a week do you do that? Uh, six days. Six days? Holy cow, that's 72 hours a week. But I bet you the reason, you know what? I bet you're working hard because you care about your family. You're trying to take care of your family. Am I right? That's right. I knew that before I called you. I knew it because that's why you sent this letter in, because you care about your family, and that's why you wanted this mortgage protection taken care of so it wouldn't be hurt if something happened to you. So it sounds like we need to meet when you get home from work or on a Sunday when you're not working. Which is better for you? Uh, Sunday. Sunday? I typically don't do business on Sundays, but since you work six days, I'll make a special trip for you. 
I could do that or whatever. But like, but notice I'm going to turn the, re, the the excuse into a reason. If you can turn the excuse into a reason, that's going to help out. All right. Um, I'm busy. I can't talk right now. Uh, who knows who's who knows who's heard me coach on how to handle that one? Great, me too. Yeah, I can't I can't talk. I don't have time now either. I don't have time to talk now either. So two can play that game. He answered his phone. He answered his phone. It's like, come on, man. But they're playing games. And I can play the same game. So I just play the same game. Don't call them out. Just say, I can't talk right now either. All I need to know is, are you at work? All I need to know is typically when do you get home from work? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Well, they've got me scheduled to be there tomorrow, which is Friday, between five and six. And I just need to make sure you'll be home in that window of time. Got to deliver this package and go over you. Perfect. We'll talk then. I'll have more time, okay? <laughs> it's a quick set. Now, they might suddenly say, what? Or they might be like, okay. I mean, one of the two, but bottom line is, I'm going to, I don't, if you reassure them you don't have time, they might take a few seconds with you there. You know? Yeah, because they might be thinking you have to talk to them about it right now. And No, I don't. I, oh, I don't have time to talk. I've got 73 other people I'm supposed to call. I call, not talk. The book of points. So I think that kind of a mindset. So, so again, call it, can, you, can you call me back? Here's an offshoot of that. I need to check with my spouse. I need to check with my spouse. Okay. I, sounds like you need to check with your spouse, Cody. What's her name? Uh, Donna. Donna? Donna. Darla. Okay. I said, well, listen, we definitely need Darla to be there. We definitely need you to check with her. Tell me, typically, when do you get home from work? Uh, between 11 a.m. and 12 noon. 11 and 12. And when does she typically get home from work? Uh, about 3 p.m. About 3 p.m.? Okay, well, as far as you know, do y'all have anything scheduled between 3.30 and 4.30 p.m. tomorrow, which is Friday? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Okay, they've got me scheduled to be there between 3.30 and 4.30 tomorrow. I need you to check with Darla to make sure she can be there. And if not, that's okay. Um, call me back as soon as possible and see if we can swap you out at a different time. Okay, but I've got the schedule for me to be at 3.30 or 4.30. Can you write that down? And can you go check with her, like, on her break or something like that? And if it's a problem, call me back. Well, the on person doesn't call you back. But you're I'm there. Anymore. I'm showing up at 3.30 or 4.30. So I'm going to fail with an appointment book. Gotcha. Now, I run the risk of maybe he forgets, doesn't check with her. But most people, though, oh, crap, this guy says he's coming over. If this man shows up and Darla sees him and I didn't tell her, I'm so typically they will want to notify Darla and then call me back or vice versa. So rather than have to play phone tag where they're then going to ignore the call later because they don't want to think about it, now the appointment's booked and they have to do something to stop me. That's the mindset. You know, it's like, because, and you say, Mike, why do we have to be that bold and that forward? Because adults act like children. <laughs> adults act like children. We have to be the adult in the room or the parent in the room to help get them there. This is a sprint to get to their house before the Grim Reaper gets there. He is trying to get there too. So we're having a race. We're going to see who's going to win. You or the Grim Reaper. And it's important. And if you're wondering, is it important? Is it real? Yeah. It, people die. If stuff happens. Somebody just told me they had a client that died like on a, was it you, Charlie? 30 days ago. 30 days ago. Like you, you so you knocked, you did a door knock? It was a I did a door knock and it was for Mr. and Mrs. And I said, is, is George in? I know he passed away last month. Yeah. So Not the first time it's happened to me, but. Passed away last month. He gone. So, I mean, so it happens. It's like, so yeah, we're, we're trying to get there and do our thing and make it happen as quick as possible. How? Okay. I don't need that. I said, sounds like you might not need this. I said, perfect. I'm just supposed to get you this information, deliver the package for you. And if you don't need it, that's perfect. We're going to close everything out. You probably don't want to be bothered about this anymore, do you? So good. Well, listen, let's find a time. We'll go over this. Make sure you don't need it. We'll sign off that you don't. That'd be perfect. What time did you say you get home from work? You know, and then you know, get back to a question. You've got to really acknowledge. Get in the spirit of acknowledging what they say. Because what most people can't stand is when they're ignored. It annoys people to no end when they've been ignored. So if you basically can repeat back what they just said, they're going to start to like you more. Oh, this guy listened to me. 
That's that's you know that's huge when you can acknowledge people. I thought it was free. I said, yeah, my this is free. I don't charge you down. <laughs> I'm supposed to bring you this information and it does not cost anything. I've said that before to a client. They end up signing up. Yeah. So yeah. How much does it cost? Oh, it doesn't cost you anything. I don't, you don't pay me anything. It's my job to get you the info. That's right. She was like, okay, come on. Come on over. So, and then you build a relationship, talk about their situation, help them identify what they need and want. So, yeah, so I think, it, you know, I, typically now there will be some people that will say, well, I thought the lead said it was free. I said, well, it said, yeah, no cost or obligation to for us to get you the information. That is correct. I said, you dying is not free. And dying is going to cost somebody some money. We're just going to help you manage it so it doesn't cost as much. Let's see, I didn't send it in. Sounds like you don't remember sending this sending this for me. Yes, I didn't say it. Sounds like you didn't say it. Sounds like you don't remember sending it in. I said, well, let me make sure I got the right person. I said, okay, well, listen, uh, I got this package. It's my job to deliver this. Since we got this for me, um, it sounds like you don't remember. And that's okay. I just need to make sure you get it. I'll explain what's going on here. And uh, uh, there's nothing else required on your part. Just, I'm just make sure supposed to, I'm just make, supposed to make sure you get this information. And I'm going to try to work through that or, again, I'm going to say, well, you do have a mortgage or, okay, well, this is the correct address, right? And this is your name. You know, so I'll be more, again, typically since they don't remember. Or would your wife fill this out? Mm, okay, yeah, she's a fill a form for a louder. Okay, well, is she there now? You know, if I need, so you can pivot. There's different ways we can pivot based on the situation. So it's just you try to be a little bit creative in those moments. Okay. All right. Now, if you've got the appointment, so he says, call me before you come. I said, well, I'm calling right now, and I'm going to be at tour between 4 and 5. Is that good enough? <laughs> I said, do you have a pen and paper? Because <laughs> I promised my wife I would not text and drive and not talk and drive on my way to appointments because I got an accident once, and she wasn't happy about that. So could I get you to write this down and have somebody else remind you? Because I'm going to be there between 4 and 5. You know, just like I book solid appointments. And I ask people to write stuff down and remind themselves. And, you know, could you put a string on your finger? <laughs> Some green yarn and make a bow out of it? Okay. Just, you know, have fun. Don't take yourself too seriously. These are some basics on, on the phone.